Hi, and welcome to Morning Startup. This morning we're talking to Evan Cunningham Dunlop, an SEO expert right here in Perth. Uh, he's also a proud member of the eGroup and on the committee there as well. Evan's going to be talking about SEO from the uh, nuts and bolts all the way through to touching on a few of the more technical aspects. Really hope you enjoy this morning and uh, look forward to hearing from you soon. So I'm um, getting some Google loving is what I'm going to talk about this morning. Um, first, I just wanted to get a little bit of an idea of who I'm talking to. So who here knows what SEO is? Okay, so pretty much everyone. Who here would say that they have an advanced level of competency in the SEO space? Okay. And you would? Okay, great. And what about um, a practicing sort of knowledge? So you, you, know, you have some involvement with updating your own sort of websites on some level, you do some sort of SEO. Okay. Cool. So, um, that's who you are. So who am I? So uh, Isaac just ran through it. I've got experience in the film and television industry. I worked for um, a lot of documentary production companies. I worked as a management consultant for a while as well for a company called Change Corporation. We did stuff for uh, Rio and BHP and so forth. And now this is what I'm involved with. So Living Online is a digital marketing and consulting firm. We do a lot of advisory, um, planning, that sort of thing. Living Media, Rowan was introducing before. We work for the building and renovation industry. We've built a lead generation platform um, where we do basically cost per lead and, and commission services for bathroom and kitchen renovations. And Quotarium is the customer facing brand for the Living Media service. So if you uh, someone who wants to generate leads for your bathroom renovation business, you'd buy from Living Media. If you're someone who wants to get your bathroom or kitchen renovated, you'd come to Quotarium. And you can find us at um, Bathroom Renovations Birth.net and KRP, which is Kitchen Renovations Birth.net as well. And then eGroup too. eGroup meets on uh, the first Tuesday of every month in Rays, which is in West Perth. Um, we've been going for quite a while. It's, it's more, I guess, for the uh, you know, just online business. Anyone who's interested in or involved with online business, come down to eGroup and check it out. And we've got a, a meetup as well, um, which has just been set up, and a website and all the rest, and a bunch of really passionate, really cool people who um, are very good at what they do. So if you want to learn from practitioners, it's a good place to be. We also have the um, tallest amateur basketball team in Perth. And I wanted to make some acknowledgements as well. And these are probably some good things to write down. If you're, um, and by the way, anyone can get this um, presentation if you're interested in, in getting it from me. There's a lot of pictures and not much in the way of notes, um, but please do do this. In terms of where I learn a lot of what I, what I learn, SEO book is fantastic. Um, it's expensive though, so this is really if you're interested in taking it to the next level, it's 300 bucks a month um, to be a member of a private forum. Moz, um, just rebranded from SEO Moz to moz.com. Um, it's really, I guess, more for people who are learning, but it still has some really advanced tips on there as well. So they have a lot of fantastic blogs where they give how-to guides uh, for free, and Search Engine Land is kind of the news venue where you can learn about a whole heap of things. Um, so, this is my, not actually my first site, but this is what I felt it looked like. I just thought, well, SEO is brilliant, you know, well actually I didn't think that, I thought, the web is brilliant, how easy is this going to be? I'm going to build a website, I'm going to throw all these affiliate links on there, and people are just going to love it, and they're going to come to it, and I'm going to make billions of dollars. So I just did this thing, signed up for, you know, affiliate um, clicks galore or something like that, and a few others, threw up all these ads, and I got, I think, you know, three visitors in the space of a year. Um, after the first couple of weeks, when I didn't get bombarded with riches, I was pretty discouraged. So after that, I thought, okay, well, I need to learn how to actually get visitors to my website and how to make a successful business. So I, I learned about this concept called SEO. I thought I'd better get my head around it. So we'll start with um, what is SEO? And by the way, I was like, if you could give me a time check when we're like 10 minutes away, something like that, that'd be brilliant. So what is SEO? Um, so this is how I define it. It's the process of optimizing both the on-site and off-site factors of a website to maximize the amount of traffic delivered through the organic search engine medium. Some people call it off-page and on-page. I think it's misleading, so I've used my own little pretentious renaming thing and call it on-site and off-site. Um, so what does that actually mean? Well, if you're looking at a Google search result, you've got the ads in the pink at the top and on the right-hand side, and these are what you call you know, your organic results. So we don't deal with the AdWords sort of stuff. That's a different sort of service, which is pay-per-click advertising via Google AdWords. So SEO is basically the process of Two things. The first one is develop, developing rankings in a higher level for um, for a particular keyword. So we take you know from page ten through to page one and get up to position number one. And the second one I would say would also be to develop a, a bigger 
broader spectrum of keywords that you're ranking for. So instead of just ranking for a couple, you might want to rank for a whole heap of them, which is one around a long tail. So um, where did it sort of come into being? Well, originally, you know, we had a whole heap of search engines that were out there in the space. I don't know how many of you guys remember using things like web crawler and, and so forth, but I do remember it. Um, and it was really, you know, it was good in the beginning because we we're like, this is fantastic. We get to, you know, use this web. We get to find whatever we want. It's brilliant. But then people, um, but now we're in the position where we have Google, Yahoo, and Bing, right? And, and they're pretty much Google is a big one. Yahoo has been bought out sort of by Bing in the partnership where they're using Bing search results. So it's really just Google and Bing now. The reason we got to that is, let's say we were working for in the franchising industry. Originally, the way it worked is a site would have its on-site factors where it would say, hey, I'm all about franchising. Just trust me. And the search engine would say, well, you're telling me you're about franchising, so therefore I'm going to believe you. The problem was that people said, well, I now understand how to do this. So let's build a site about Viagra, pretend we're all about franchising, tell the search engines we're all about franchising, but then when people get there, we'll use you know, cloaking or a sneaky redirect or something similar, and then they'll go to the Viagra page, and we're going to get heaps of leads for Viagra. So I remember searching and like, here's another spam result, here's another spam result, and it was really hard, you know, and the idea of um, trying to get over the spam was a big problem. So then Google um, developed, when they were in university, developed the idea of the PageRank algorithm. And basically what PageRank is the idea of, and this is what, uh, you know, powered Google forward, is the idea of a site that has a lot of sites linking to it must be a good site, because each link is a vote of authority. Um, it's a vote of popularity and approval. And furthermore, if a site which has a lot of sites linking to it is linking to another site, then that link is worth more than this link because it's got a lot of inbound links. So then what we had was the on-site factors where the site is telling the search engines what it's about plus the number of links it's getting, then allow the search engines to rank well and that's why we have Google on top of the pedestal. So why do we do SEO? Um, so these are some fairly old stats, but they're still relevant. The SERPs have changed a bit since then, but they're still really important. Basically what this is saying is if you're ranked high, that's the big piece of the pie, that's number one, then according to the AOL um, leak search data for 2006, you got 42.13% of the clicks. Number two was 11.9, number three was 8.5. By the time you're on number 10, it sounds 2.99. And then by the time you're on page two, you're getting you know, a negligible amount of traffic. So being ranked number one was super important which was reinforced by Kernel University data as well, 56.36% of the, link of the uh, clicks in the first result, 30.45 and so forth. This is also a heat mapping um, stat. You can check this out on inquiro.com. Um, they have basically said that people are looking in that top left corner. Um, like I was saying before, it has changed a little bit because now AdWords are a lot more like organic search results than what they used to be. They used to be very kind of particular and now they're becoming more and more blended. You know, it was this stark yellow sort of area, and now it's kind of like an off-white yellow. If you look at it from a certain angle, you can realize that it's an ad word. Um, so basically, you know, the idea being that SEO drives a lot of traffic to your website. So the way I'm going to structure um, the rest of this presentation, just to give you guys a little bit of an idea, is I'm going to talk about how the game has changed and why that's a very important thing. Then I'm going to look at um, some of the top 10 things not to do. I'm going to look at some of the five biggest strategic tips, some of the top 10 things to do with your website and uh, answer a few questions as well. In terms of the game has changed, it really has. Um, over the last couple of years, we've had a, a massive um, sort of development in the space with some very big algorithmic updates. And it's resulted in a lot of people getting burnt pretty badly um, with their, their websites. Not just SEO practitioners, but people who are small businesses that have engaged SEO services without really knowing what the risk is behind it. And their websites have tanked pretty bad. And there's a lot of people that are feeling pretty frustrated out there. Um, and that's because of what we call you know, algorithmic updates. So first I'm just going to look back at it, the sort of historical major updates. Google makes about 500 of these per year, so they say. Um, and it's easy to see a lot of flux in the search results. You know, if you track your rankings, you can see it on a daily basis. Um, so the first sort of big noticeable update that was out there was Florida in November 2003. Then we had Universal Search in May 2007, where you had, and there's a bunch of ones in between. These are the ones that I consider to be the most significant. So we had Universal Search in May 2007, where you started getting like, you know, the YouTube results appearing in the search results and so forth. We had Vince in February of 2009, where brand was promoted. Florida, by the way, I think was um, a, people didn't really know what it was, but I'm pretty sure it was a uh, infrastructure update, pretty much. 
um, which allowed Google to do processing a lot faster rather than an actual tweak of the algorithm. Um, no follow in June 2009, so this was the idea that a link could not pass page rank if it had the no follow attribute, and originally it was intended to address the idea of spam on blog comments and so forth, so Google said, but very quickly after that they made a rule that anyone who doesn't have the no follow attribute attached to a paid link would then be deemed to be a spammer. And not only were you a spammer, but you'd be blacklisted from the search results. So if you were selling links which allowed you to get better Google rankings, then you're in big, big trouble. So they brought it out under the auspice of doing a good thing and then kind of you know, contorted it for their own purposes. So no follow in June 2009 was a very big update. Caffeine, again, another infrastructure update, August 2009. AdWords site links, um, this was November of 2009, so AdWords becoming more and more prominent, taking more and more of that search result. And I think you know, they've really captured quite a bit of that now from my own experience. Um, instant, September 2010, so remember you started typing in and then the words started appearing for you. Not provided, um, October 2011, so before you used to know where all of your organic search engine traffic was coming from. Now if it's coming from an HTTPS source, you don't know what someone was actually searching for. It just says not provided as a keyword, so a lot of the referral data is being hidden. Knowledge graph of 2012, so you type for irony definition. Instead of going to an, a dictionary page, Google gives you the answer right there. You know, you look for your IMDb rating, you can see what it is without having to go through. So a lot of the traffic is not actually flowing through to the sites that are providing the information. EMD update in 2012 where sites like, um, I don't know, I don't know why I keep using the Viagra examples, but Buy Viagra Now wouldn't rank as well for Buy Viagra Now as what would you know, a site by Cialis or whoever is a company that makes it, um, plus a whole heap more. But we've had some really big ones in the last couple of years that I think are you know, the most significant. Um, and this is Google Panda in February 23rd of 2011. There's been a lot of iterations of these ones that have come out since then, but this is when they first launched. This is basically in response to sites like Demand Media. Um, Demand Media, this is a little uh, thing here, it was a company that just came out of nowhere. Created in 2006, at the end of the first day of trading after the IPO in January 2011, the stock was at $22.65 a share, which gave the company a market capitalization of $1.78 and Demand Media was basically um, a company which had been built with the idea of capturing SEO traffic. Um, the way they did it was, as it says here, Christian Manos Donoso is going to make this job pay. He's got to move quickly. He has a list of 10 videos to shoot on this warm June morning, for which he'll earn just $200. So they were he can't create award-winning you know, documentaries and films for you know, 20 bucks a video. It's going to be pretty crappy. So you had a whole bunch of people who were sitting there just you know, producing this content, producing massive volumes of it. They had an algorithm that was geared towards figuring out what are the right sorts of keywords to be writing traffic for so they could actually see where's the volume, what's the competition like, now let's produce a bunch of content to capture that. And they used you know, the on-site factors. They bought a site called ehow.com which had a whole heap of authority already from um, previous links because it was a great site in the beginning. You, know, you wanted to learn how to to uh, build a door, you go to eHow and it tells you in like a 2,000 word article with pictures and everything. So they bought that and backfilled it with a whole heap of crappy content, relied upon the site authority and made a huge business out of it. But the problem was we got really, really bad content. So it was, you know, how to wash a car, buy car washing equipment, wash your car thoroughly, be very careful, enjoying your clean car. And it was a whole heap of content like that. You know, you'd go to the eHow, you know, again. So a lot of people complained about it, so they brought out the, um, it was also called the content farm update. but Google termed it the Panda update. What was the Panda impact? EL.com got absolutely smashed. A whole heap of sites got absolutely smashed. This was demand media. The stock price got smashed accordingly. And Ezine articles, a lot of people probably know about, got absolutely smashed. Just crappy content that people had put out there. Um, associated content bought by Yahoo uh, there and down to there. So that got absolutely smashed. Um, actually, it might have been bought by Yahoo back there, sorry. But still, either way, it got came by this. And then we had Google Penguin in April 24, 2012. So why did that come about? Um, the Penguin problem was pretty much that if you took links, as I was talking about before from the PageRank algorithm, you combined it with anchor text. So anchor text is, we'll stick on the same thing, um, by Viagra now, right? You want to rank for that term, you get a little word, instead of saying click here and that becoming the hyperlink, that's your anchor text. And if you had a lot of anchor text, then Google used that as a ranking factor and thought, well, if you have that anchor text, then that must be because everyone else who's giving you this links naturally thinks that that's what your site's about. So, you know, they're linked to morningstartup.com with morning startup. So that must be what your site's about. So therefore, um, that's what we're going to rank you for. 
But it was just, it was super easy. You know, you got some links, you got them with some anchor text, and the rankings went up. But sometimes you had less than pretty results. So, you know, there's a lot of sites that just shouldn't have been there, really, and they were capturing traffic because they knew how to do SEO. So Google said, no more Mr. Nice Penguin, and they had the Penguin algorithm which was released, and it had results like this, where um, this is songlyrics.com, they just got tamed. Yeah, as well. So those are, those are real impacts you know, that are affecting real businesses that have real employees um, and they're very important to recognize that Google algorithmic updates do make very big differences in the performance of not just your website but your business because less traffic equals less sales pretty much whether that's advertising or leads or e-commerce or whatever it is. Um, so we had, this is the only experience that I've had with it, this was one of our internal sites through Living Media. Um, it just was starting off and we we're just you know, pushing up a little bit. We we're a little bit more aggressive than what we would have done with our clients because I was willing to take the risk and let's just push it a little bit. And when Penguin got released, I noticed that's not the trajectory I was expecting. You know, I was really expecting it to go up um, there and it didn't. Um, but we had some success with this. So um, it, we kind of left it for this period of time. We basically here, what we did was the reason it got caned by Penguin is because we had overly optimized anchor text. It's pretty much what it comes down to. So um, this was for bathroomrenovationsperth.net and instead of saying um, you know, our brand name, we had a whole heap of like bathroom renovations Perth, bathroom designs Perth, um, you know, bathroom whatever Perth and a whole heap of uh, different links like that. Um, and so when the, the Penguin update came out, we, we noticed that impact. From here, we basically built what would be called a lot of branded links. So we had a lot of things like www.bathroomrenovationsperth, um, Quaterium, BRP, and so forth. And we did notice this was at, um, just after Christmas, so I would have expected a peak here anyway, because a lot of people would come back from holidays and they're thinking, okay, it's you know, time to renovate this bathroom. My rallies were just over and they thought it was disgusting, so I need to get this renovated. But you know, we're now at a level which is staying higher than where we were before the Penguins. So um, the point of that is, I do think that recoveries are possible from algorithmic updates, but do you really want to be repairing problems with your website versus building websites and taking it forward? Personally, you know, I would have preferred if um, you know, we had continued on that track without doing things that were pushing the envelope a little bit better and then we didn't have to fix the problem and come back to where we were. I think we would have been at a better level. And this is an example of this sort of stuff. You know, this is a, quite a prominent Perth um, uh, web company and also an SEO company. So this was one of their first sites. It got caned by Penguin. That's right at the point of Penguin. They got caned big time, like way worse than we got caned. So we just pushed it a little bit. They pushed it a lot. Um, then they released a new site. They did a 301 redirect into their new site. It went up a lot. And hey, you know, they're at they're better levels than ever. I just checked last night and they've got caned again. So personally, you know, I think that's not the sort of approach we want to be taking. So now I'll go into um, the top 10 things not to do with your website. And this is the reason I've covered this before is because I wanted to set up um, basically why it's important to not do these sort of things and why it's important to do other stuff. So don't create high volumes of really crappy content. You know, it's, it's not that hard. Just do not think that the way to have success in the SEO space is to produce lots of content and have average content. Because if you are doing that, you're forgettable. No one wants to come to your site. It's much better to be you know, have a unique selling proposition where people recognize, hey, your site is the site where I can find the best possible article on this particular topic, and I'm going to tell my friends about it, I'm going to link to it, I'm going to come back over and over and over again, and I'm going to have a loyal sort of following with this. So don't do this. Don't create high numbers of anchor text rich links. So that used to be a good thing to do. You know, you want to rank for Web Design Perth, create the Web Design Perth things. Don't do that anymore. Create branded links as what you want to um, create if you are going to be creating links. It's maybe controversial, but I, I really would recommend against engaging SEO services from um, overseas telemarketers or pretty much, you know, any overseas provider who don't have a really working, a really, if they won't tell you what they're doing, don't use their service. Unless they're prepared to tell you exactly what they're doing, just steer away from it 100%. The reason for this is we get engaged by companies who've used overseas telemarketers asking us, can you please help us and save us from the abyss and we look at it and shake our heads thinking how is this even possible that they've done this sort of stuff in this time you know this day and age um, so I really would steer away from that even if it is one tenth of the price there's a reason that it's a tenth of the price it's risky highly highly risky 
unless you're prepared, you know, you just want to do the burn and churn. You're like, create some site, you want to rank for two weeks, you want to rank really fast, and then you don't care what happens, including if Google sends people in, in nasty black suits around your house in the middle of the night. Um, don't submit your site to heaps of really crappy directories. So that was, again, something that was you know, quite popular, is just get a lot of directory links, and it worked very well. Don't buy links from link networks, link farms, or link brokers. Buying links can work. Um, I would not buy links from anywhere that has a footprint at all. And if you think it doesn't have a footprint, think again, because it probably does have a footprint. Um, Google has done a lot of changes with Penguin and with other algorithmic updates where things like link farms so, or a link network. So let's say someone goes, well, I need to build a business. So one of the things that I can do is I can create a whole big network of sites and then I can sell links from these sites. And you know, by doing that, I can make a lot of money. So people go, oh, well, how do I, how do, I do this SEO thing? I need to, I need to buy some links and say, oh, well, I can buy links for like five bucks a link. This is going to be brilliant. So they buy the links. Then Google goes, well, okay, we found a link network. Anyone who has links from this link network probably has bought the link. So let's penalize them. Problem is, of course, that your competitors can also have bought links for you. And now you've got the, the idea of negative SEO as well, where you can actually take a website out, um, which never used to exist before. But um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. And you know, sometimes they also, just in terms of how link networks work, they have a whole series of hacked sites as well. So they might have hacked into a whole bunch of sites and hosted a little page on there that the webmaster doesn't actually know exists, and they sell links from those hacked sites. Just steer away from them. Um, this is a big one, and you'd be surprised how many people actually do this. So if you're using robots.txt, or even if you don't know if you're using robots.txt, check it. Don't accidentally block your site from the search engines using robots.txt. In fact, I think robots.txt is, it's just like, I don't know, you, you want to, I want to do a little bit of renovation over there, and I'm, I'm carrying a sledgehammer. You know, you, you don't need a sledgehammer, you might need a little chisel. So use meta directives instead of robots.txt to control access to your website. That's you know, using the noindex attribute. Um, don't use dynamic parameters in your URLs, especially parameters that look like search queries. Um, this is a big one. We've been working on a, a client recently who should have been ranking a lot better than what they were. Um, what I found was that Google, they have a, a statement that they've put out. They don't often put things out and say, this is what we recommend. In fact, this is what we almost direct you do. But what they have said is, we do not want search queries to be ranking in our search query. So they term that to be a bad user experience. So they've said, if you have search queries, then you need to noindex them from the search results, right? The problem with that is a lot of sites have search queries as a core part of content. So think about Amazon. You know, like you've got a whole heap of rankings inside the Amazon um, site, which are basically someone's typed in for you know, video cameras, and they get that, and they want that page to rank, because that's their product listing page. So you can still do it, but don't do it in a way that makes it look like a search query. And one of the best ways to do that is to not use dynamic parameters in the URL. Don't spam, um, whether that be through automated blog commenting, mass forum posting, hacking, or any turnkey link building software. I don't think it's worth it in any stretch of the imagination. Um, don't have a site that takes a long time to load. This is a, a really actually important one as well. Um, Google, although they, you can look at Google in two ways, right? You can, you can look at Google and you can say, well, actually, you can say it's, it's great, because it is. It's a brilliant sort of um, service and, and website and so forth. You can also say um, Google is just about themselves, right? They, they just want to make money. They want to have a site that sells a lot of ads. Um, and they might do some things that are a bit sneaky to do that. Um, but you can also recognize, and I think it is important to recognize, that they do want to have a, a going concern of a business, and they do want to have a very popular business that people continue to use. So a big thing that they're promoting is accessibility. With mobile, and you know, the, uh, the, the spawn of mobile, and also without mobile, the accessibility is, is highly geared around load time. You know, it's a very important thing. So um, if you have a site that loads quickly, it's going to be a positive ranking factor for you. So I'd really focus on that. And you can do tests against your competitors. You can find some places where you can type in your domain name, your competitors' domain names, and you can compare how long it's actually taken to load. You can benchmark against your competitors. It'll produce a little video for you and show you how long you've taken. So I'd do that. I'd benchmark against your competitors and see, am I loading quickly? If you're not loading super fast, make yourself load super fast. Don't forget about the long tail. So remember how I was talking about how you, know, you can take the keyword and you can rank it highly? That's great, but you also want to rank for a lot of 
keywords. So that's to do with creating content, basically. So I really wouldn't forget about that. Um, and I said 10, but I'm throwing a little bonus one. And I'd say, don't focus on traffic at the expense of conversions. So it's, it's great to get a lot of traffic to your website, but does that really matter? It doesn't. It doesn't matter at all. It's maybe a factor that you could say leads to some other things that matter, but the, the reality is what you want to do is you want to make sales, or you want to sell advertising, or something similar. So focus on the KPIs that actually matter, and figure out how to put things into the underlying um, driving forces of those, and conversions is really what you want to focus on. So these would be um, my top five strategic tips, which are kind of taking a bit of a, a wider, non-technical uh, look at SEO. The first one is understand the problem. Um, what I mean by that is, is SEO actually what you need to be doing for your website? And I know it might sound weird, you know, the SEO guy getting up here and saying, you know, do you actually need to be doing SEO? But it's important. You know, really, maybe you don't need to be doing SEO. Like Dropbox, for example, when that company launched, they tried AdWords, they tried SEO. It was useless for them because no one understood what their product was. So no one was searching for cloud storage device, you know? People weren't searching for it. The way they built their business was through referrals and developing that. You remember, you know, with Dropbox, you can get the free data by inviting your friends and they join. That was a massive success for them. So first of all, understand your problem. If SEO is not right for you, don't focus on SEO. You've only got a limited amount of time and resources to put them where it's important. Plan for algorithmic change. Um, this is really, really important. So what I mean by that is, you know, don't say, okay, well, this is how I do SEO. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it in this way and I'm going to uh, hope that the search engines don't change and, I, and they don't kind of catch what I'm doing. It's a bit sneaky. Except straight up that they will change. They will catch what you're doing. And even if they don't catch it at the point you're doing it, they have been known to, you know, retroactively, I think is the word, retrospectively, I'm not sure which one I should be using, um, you know, penalize things, penalize sites for things that were done in the past. So focus on stuff that you're just completely confident that will not get you in trouble five years from now. And if Google doesn't, isn't able to see your little link, you know, link network at the moment, they're probably going to develop some technology that figures out how to do that. So I would focus on things that are going to be um, immune to that sort of stuff. Plan for the future. Um, this is a really big one as well. So, you know, Google is developing their machine learning algorithm. They've got semantic analysis and so forth. We've also got virtual reality um, and augmented reality with Google Glass. They're not just small little things. You know, this is something which is going to be the way that people are interacting with the web, um, you know, through things like augmented reality. So plan for that sort of stuff and, and recognize it's coming. Diversify. Um, I think that with the risk profile, I mean, that's what a lot of my algorithmic update coverage is trying to kind of emphasize was that the risk profile has changed a lot. So diversification is very important. So if you're, let's say, for example, you have um, a, a site and you've got a, a company and you sell web design services, you sell hosting services, and you sell domain names. It's great to have a site that covers all of those sort of things, but I don't think that it could be seen as being unworthy. I think it would be a very good idea to have sites that also cover those particular discrete elements. Because then if one of your sites does get burnt for whatever reason, even if it's by negative SEO, so even if one of your competitors decides to take you out, you've got some other sites that are backing you up. I wouldn't say that make five sites that are all covering web design services, because Google's not going to like that. But if you can segment them and compartmentalize them into discrete sort of services, I think that's a good way of diversifying. And most importantly, build great websites. Just build stuff that's awesome. It's really the most important thing you can do from an SEO perspective. Build awesome, awesome websites. So here's um, top 10 action items um, for what uh, I think you should do from an SEO perspective. First is measure your performance. So if you don't know what's happening on your website, how do you know what is working? How do you know what you should be doing? In terms of um, some little actionable things you can do for that, Google Analytics is great, it's free, you can, you can install it, it's very, very powerful. So I'd install Google Analytics on your website if it's not there already. You can also use other software as well, there's a, there's a bunch of really good ones that are out there, but Analytics is free. Um, install Google Webmaster Tools. If something has happened in a negative way, apart from providing you with some, you know, some functionality, you can submit sitemaps and so forth, if something's happened in a negative way and Google has applied a manual penalty to your website, the only way you find out is through Google Webmaster Tools. If you have a problem with your site at the moment and you don't know what it is and you think you've got a penalty, sign up to Google Webmaster Tools and there might be a message there waiting for you telling you you have manual action which has been taken against you. So sign up for that one. 
um, and track your rankings. So figure out you know, what, are, what are the keywords you need to uh, be ranking for and track them. You can use Rank Tracker, which you can get for free. That's a Firefox plugin, which you can download from an SEO book. Um, or you can use something we like, Authority Labs. I think it's an excellent service. It's paid though, it costs about 100 bucks a month. That's a cloud service that tracks rankings on a daily basis. You don't have to do it. Um, so depending on where you are in the spectrum, Rank Tracker or Authority Labs. Um, keyword research is the second one. Figure out what keywords are important to your business. So you need to understand, um, are people searching for web design Perth or are they searching for web design in Perth? It might be that only 10 people are searching for web design in Perth and 1,500 people per month are searching for web design in Perth. If you don't know that, how do you know what sort of content to produce in relation to that? So do keyword research. The way to do that, um, the easiest way is use a Google AdWords keyword tool. Again, it's free. Um, you can do it without having an AdWords account. You can also sign up for an AdWords account and not actually spend any money on it and then have a, a better sort of user experience on there, but I'd use that. Um, check your exact match and your phrase match ranking. So make sure you're not looking at broad match. Google kind of defaults it to this idea of broad match in the beginning, which pretty much says, okay, well, if someone's searching for red shoes, that's sort of the same as someone searching for pink fluffy clogs. So we're gonna say that it's the same sort of keyword volume, but it's not. So you know, look at the phrase match and the exact match volumes and see what are people actually searching for and make sure you're defaulted to local Australia unless you're a global business. Create amazing content. Optimize your title tags. Um, so does everyone know what a title tag is or not? So not some heads shaking, some saying yes. So a title tag basically, if you were to search in Google and you search for a particular query, you know how you get a, a bunch of listings and then you have that blue thing that you click on? That's a title tag. That's what Google sees as a title tag. Sometimes Google will actually insert their own title with tag there for you if they think they've got a better one. But the title tag on your website, it's easy. You can, you can Google it and figure out what it is. You just insert a little title tag directive. If you've got a WordPress site, you can get plugins which you can install that allow you to write your title tags for each of your pages. So make sure that your title tags um, have the keywords in them that you're wanting to rank for. But don't do it in a way that's just spamming it. You know? So you want to do it in a way that still looks after your, your click-through rate. So if I come to a search result, right, and I'm searching for chiropractor, something like that, and I see, um, not that I use a chiropractor, but if I was, then if I was to search and I saw chiropractor, chiropractic, chiropractor Perth, buy chiropractor now, I'm probably less likely to click on that than I am to click on a link that says um, Perth's best chiropractor verified by hundreds or something. That's, it's a selling proposition for me. So it's still got chiropractor in there. Um, it's still got the Perth word in there, but it's got a sales proposition for me that I think, hey, that's, that's what I want to click on. So optimize your title tags in a way that includes your keywords, but has a focus on, great, what your, um, I'll be finished pretty soon, but what your, uh, your sales proposition is as well. Optimize your meta descriptions. Um, again, it's a click-through rate thing. So when you, when you search in the Google search results, you've got the blue link, then you've got the, I think it's, I can't remember what color it is. I think the actual URL is green, so whatever it is, it's gray or something. Um, that description, it's 155 characters. Optimize that so it includes the ability to, um, again, have a selling proposition and include your keywords and so forth as well. Develop a highly engaged and highly active social media following. So um, you know how I was showing, so basically Google has confirmed that um, social signals are being used as a ranking factor and a lot of correlation studies have been done to show that this is being used as a ranking factor. So that's the number of tweets you have, the number of Facebook likes and stuff, number of Google plus ones, Google shares, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. Um, when the last Penguin iteration was released, um, just recently in, in May, I noticed some pretty interesting things. And one of the things I noticed that was one of our competitors in the bathroom renovation space shot from pretty much obscurity to just went bang. And they've only done, they haven't done SEO on their site. They've done two things. They've produced a site which actually kind of sucks, um, but it's got a lot of content on there, including a lot of images and so forth. And the second thing they've done is they've really focused on social media. So they've got a very active social media following. They've got a thousand Facebook likes. They've got a bunch of, I don't even know how much um, of a Twitter following they have, but they have, they have a lot of social media. Um, and they have just absolutely rocketed and, and really benefited from the last algorithmic update. I don't, I'm not Google, so I can't say that's what happened, but the only thing that I can see really that would have made a big impact is either A, they haven't been flagged as having a big social media, uh, sorry, a big SEO active campaign, so they're, they're not flagged as an SEO, right? 
Um, and the second thing is they've been very active in social media, so I'd really develop that. Also, having a really highly, highly active social media allows you to create great content and let people know about it, so then they share it with each other, then they find it, and then they link to it and so forth. So social media is very important. Build solid gold links. If you are going to build links, just from you know, kind of a, a simple sort of high-level perspective, guest posting <coughs> does work. It's getting um, over-bandied a lot. A lot of people are promoting and saying, oh, well, you know, guest posting this, guest posting that, and starting to get emails talking about guest posting. But it works, it works well. If you're going to do a guest post on very high quality sites, Isaac did a guest post um, just yesterday and showed it to me on a great site and I'm sure that was very good for Tidy Club. Um, branded anchor text, so use branded anchor text, not keyword rich anchor text. And develop real world relationships where you can get links from. So you know, if I'm coming and speaking um, at morningstartup.com, maybe they give me a link to my website, that's a good thing. Um, if I've got friends or family or something similar, then leverage those real world relationships, but by real world I also mean if you have relationships with people online via Twitter or something similar, you can also um, get links from there. Use the rel equals canonical tag. I'm not going to explain what that is, it's, it's a little bit complex, but it's basically to do with duplicate content. <coughs> do use it. And this is a bit of a, an advanced tip, which um, you might like this one, I'm not sure if you've seen it yet. Check out pubsubhubbub.appspot.com. Um, basically that's a way of there's a problem in the search results at the moment where if you do create content, other sites find your content quickly, steal your content, scrape it, and then tell Google about it. Hey, I've got the content, I've got the content. And then Google says, oh, they've got the content. And you go, but I actually made the content. But you don't rank for it because they told Google first. So pubsubhubbub.appspot.com is a service that sort of some Google affiliated type people or employees have created, which allows you to basically ping Google with what's called a fat ping, which includes the content and say, I've got the content. So as soon as you create it, you can tell Google about it. If you're having scraping problems, do with that. Create XML and HTML sitemaps. Um, XML, submit them to Google Webmaster Tools. HTML sitemaps for indexability and general crawling your website. And again, I'm kind of going a little bit um, into the bonus things because it makes me feel special. Um, educate yourself. So check out moz.com, seobook.com, and searchengineland.com. They will um, give you a lot of knowledge. And 12, ask me anything you want. So if you want to... Um, to submit some, some questions to me via email or pick up the phone, I'm happy to answer. Um, big thing is that because of the changes that have happened recently, a lot of players have left the field and a lot of the things that were quite, uh, people who were doing dodgy stuff but were getting great results have now gone. So it's, you've got a lot more freedom. If you're doing great, cool websites with good, honest SEO, you'll do really well. And you know, you guys are, uh, are in pole position because you have the experience and the knowledge to be able to really take this one forward. Questions?